Hello there, Captains. This is Sorvacian coming to you from Naval Action, and Patch 9.9 .9 is out. And holy crap, have they changed a lot of stuff. And they've added quite a bit of stuff, too. I mean, like, boarding has changed, crafting, they've brung back fleets, they've added fishing, officers, they, crew management, they've made changes to some of the ships, to conquest, They're like... Tons of stuff, and I'm going to go over it all in this video. And this is going to be a long video, just to prepare you now. So, uh, let's start with officers. Officers are one of the new things they've added to the game. So, when you log into the game, you're going to notice that your port screen is, well, a little bit more cluttered now. There's a few extra things there. Officers being one of them, and you can uh, manage your officers by going to the officers button. And here you can see I've already got one. You can hire an officer by clicking the hire officer button. It costs a thousand gold. So it's not too expensive. Yes, confirm. No, I've already reached the maximum number of officers. So you can only have one so far. When you get your officer, he will come with a name. If you don't like that name, you can right click and dismiss him and then get a new officer for another thousand gold and you can keep doing that until you get a name that you like. It will also come with 10 lives and he will start at rank one with zero points or something like that. Anyways, so his rank it increases with the more XP he gets so you can uh, kind of view more details by going to the promote button and here you can see stuff in a little bit more detail the amount of XP you need to get to the next rank. Uh, officers don't... Well, the officer goes in your current ship. Whatever ship you're manning, that officer join you, joins you. And if I go to the equipment, see here off there is supposed to be spaces for the officers. I don't think they've implemented that yet. So you have one officer and he just goes on your ship. So don't worry about uh, this row of empty spots right now anyways um, and he gains experience uh, through the battles that you do he gets a certain amount I don't know what the exact percentage is but it's I don't know maybe like a quarter maybe 25% of whatever the experience you get he's gonna get something like that just from my kind of testing of it and as he levels up, he gains more ranks, and with every rank he gets, he gets an additional point. And these points can be spent for perks. I already have the double charge and double shot perks here and here. And you can view your perks by clicking on this plus. So there's quite a few perks. Uh, they're going to add a more. Uh, there's the coward perk, which costs three points. So they all have a varying amount uh, of kind of like points you need to spend on them depending on what they do. Coward allows you to exit the battle a minute faster so your exit timer is reduced. So as long as you don't get hit for a minute, you're out instead of having to wait the two minutes. Very useful for a trader trying to escape a battle. Okay, we have double charge here, one of my favorites. I don't know why this only costs one point, but it is so freaking OP. I mean, seriously, I will... Like, I'll show you in a minute just how overpowered this is. Anyways, it, it allows the use of double charge. So that's basically double the powder with one cannonball. Which means that cannonball is going to get fired a lot faster. It's basically going to have double the penetration. That is pretty freaking crazy. And, I mean, like, if you can get it to hit in the right place, guaranteed leaks with every shot. Not joking. Anyways, I'll show you that in a minute. Double shot. Double shot is basically two cannonballs in one cannon with just the normal amount of powder. So because you have twice the, the number of cannonballs to propel out of the cannon with just the same amount of powder, they're basically going to get fired with half the velocity and have half the penetration. This could be more useful against going against go, going against smaller ships or 
you know, dealing with ships at extremely close range. It's almost like giving a double broadside. But you need to be, you know, dealing with ships with thin enough armor or you need to be close enough to your opponent to, you know, to get the penetrations because you only have half the velocity. Frigate Master. So basically, this makes you better at sailing frigates. You get one additional knot in speed and you get a uh, plus 5% to your reload. So, I mean, that's nice. You reload faster and you get... And it's faster. Light ship master is the same thing, but with small, basically shallow ships. And line ship master. These are for your third, second, and fourth rate. No, third, second, and first rates. So basically, light ship master is everything up to a frigate, it, like including a, a light frigate. So basically, everything up to I think like maybe a Niagara. Frigate Master would be everything from a Cerberus up to a Constitution or an Inger Melind. Line Ship would be everything from a third rate up to a first rate. Pirate Hunter, yeah. So you hate pirates, and if your enemy is a pirate, and you are not a pirate, or maybe it works if you are a pirate, um, you basically you get a 20% reload. I mean, that's cool. The opposite, if you are a pirate... And you're fighting against someone who has a, a, a nation's flag. Well, you get some ad additional speed, which is cool. Then there's the prepared one. So you start with all guns loaded. Very useful for capturing traders. Very useful. Thrifty, and which I, I'm hoping to get later. Battle repairs don't consume a repair kit. Very handy for a first rate, where it's very expensive. Mortar officer increases your accuracy with... The, well, just mortar stuff, it makes it better with mortar. Unfortunately, they nerfed mortars, so having this doesn't actually make the mortar better. It just kind of evens it out. And we have our determined defender. So basically, boarding is only possible if the enemy has 40% more crew. I mean, if you're in a fourth rate, that's crazy. Basically, only third rates can, can board you. No one else will be able to board you. That in... It's only two points. I mean, that's just absolutely crazy. All right. So those are the perks. Um, and I wanted to show you how... Just how OP uh, double charges. So here, let me show you that. And then we'll move on. Okay, yeah. Right about there. Perfect. There we go. Look at that. 33 leaks in this guy. And it's not the most I've ever gotten. I've gotten 41 leaks one time. Fortunately, I didn't get a video of it. And with 31 leaks, this guy should go down pretty darn quickly. And that's because I've got him on my windward side. You can see, like, look at how my sails are turned. They're pushing my ship into a lean. And they're pushing his ship into a lean too, which is exposing, you know, just below his waterline. And that is um, meaning that I can get those shots right in under the waterline. And it doesn't look like he's sinking quite yet. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have enough charge, enough charges of that. Well, I guess I could if I unloaded these guys here on my right side. We'll switch them to ball. And we'll switch my guy there to double side. Yeah. And we're going to tell them to not load. Okay. So on this side, uh, we'll switch to ball. Then we'll switch back. Yeah, now they're all loading. Oh, look at that. He already sank while I was playing around with that because he took so many leaks. Wow. <laughs> Oops. I almost forgot, I need to talk about his lives, so when you get uh, an officer, uh, he comes with 10 lives. If you lose your ship, your officer will lose one of their lives. Surrendering doesn't count. You don't lose a life on your officer if you surrender. But if you do lose your ship, for any reason, whether it gets captured or sunk, your officer will lose one of his lives. And once they've lost all 10, they're gone. 
any and all progress you've made, any all perks you've uh, accumulated on them, they're just simply gone and you have to get a new officer. Okay, so the next big thing that I want to cover is crew management. Crew management affects everything in the game now. Before, it used to be that, you know, as long as y you had a high enough rank you and you could fully crew a ship, you would fully crew a ship. And after every battle, your crew would be fully replenished. Now, not the case. And this has big implications for battles and also for uh, capturing ships. Because it used to be that you could go into a fleet order with some of your buddies in a capping ship, like say a Pavel, and you could go and cap like, I don't know, four centismas, and you would lose like maybe 80% of your crew. And as soon as you finish the battle and exit out, you would be full crew again. And you could just sail on to the next battle, use some repair kits, hop in and do the same thing over again. That is not the case now. Now you have basically a pool of crew up to the, up to the maximum that your rank allows. So I'm a curse. My leadership gives me a, uh, a maximum pool of 1,100 crew. I can't go past that. I can't have any more than 1,100 crew at any given time. I'm, but I can have less than that on my ship. So, like, I'm in my victory right now. It requires 850 crew. And so, it, the game has automatically put on 850 crew onto the ship. If I switch to my uh, Santa Zima, you can see, look at that. It automatically put on the maximum amount of crew because I have 1100 to play with and my extra hammocks adds a percentage of whatever my crew is on that ship and the rest of the crew is just kind of sitting in port you know drinking beer having fun in my free crew pool you can manage your crew by clicking this button and you can adjust how much crew you want to have on your ship. So you can actually like under crew a ship anytime you want. Even if you even if you're higher. So here I've selected 700 and with the percentage I'm getting off of my extra hammocks, that means I'm going to get an additional 88 crew, which I don't have to pay for or replenish. They're just there and it's always a percentage of how much crew you have on your ship at any given time. So if you like lose 200 crew off in a battle, then instead of having 88 from your extra hammocks, you would have something more akin to uh, 63. So here, I'm just gonna put, let's put 760 on my Santa Zima. Okay, sending crew to ships and stuff. Cool, so now I'm basically under crewing my Santa Zima. I have 760 and I get 95 additional crew for my extra hammocks and the rest of my crew is sitting here. Import, basically doing nothing. But I generally don't want to do that. So I'm just gonna go and I'm going to put the maximum amount of crew I can on that ship. And I go back down to 50. All right, so at this point, uh, I'm going to take a break from crew management because I want to talk about fleets that they've re-added into the game. So um, before it used to be that you could only use uh, fleets up to a certain rank. Now that has been completely um, changed. You can use, you can have a fleet basically anywhere except in port battles so long as you have the crew to crew the ships in your fleet. Now you can have five ships in your fleet, but you can only take two out with you at any given time. Now I'll show you how to manage that. So uh, let's switch to my victory because I'm gonna want some extra crew. And I have a Rename here, which just a cheap one that I bought uh, off the shop. And I right clicked it and that gave me the option to send to fleet. Now you can only send a ship to your fleet as long as it has nothing in it or on it. That includes cannons, regular upgrades, permanent upgrades, and anything in the hold. So I'm going to click send to fleet. 
and it has magically gone to my fleet and there it is it has shown up so at this point it's in my fleet but it's not going to come out and sail with me because it's not like technically in my f like in my sailing fleet i guess you could call it to do that i need to actually click this white box which doesn't actually immediately look like a, uh, a checkbox does it but you can click it and by doing so there you go you have a little check mark it is now added to your fleet that you're actually going to take out into the open world and into battles and I can go back to my crew management and now you can see look at that my Rename is in my fleet now if I just took it out now it wouldn't do anything because it has no crew. I have to assign crew to this Rename. Now I have 250 crew and by default it has one crew on it. Like one guy's gonna do anything. Of course not. So I'm just gonna use the slider and I'm gonna put it up all the way to the maximum. So that's gonna use up 1,090 of my total crew pool that my leadership allows which is 1,100. And by doing that, my Rename will be fully crewed. And I just click OK. Sending crew to ships. And now it is fully crewed. And I have 240 crew on my fleet ships. I have 850 crew on my main ship. I can not purchase any more crew because I am at my maximum cap of 1100. So if I go sail out into the open world now, now this Rename will come and fight alongside me and I'll be able to control it in combat, which I will show you in a little, a little bit later. But I want to go back and sh uh, show you how to keep managing your fleet. All right, so I have my Rename here. Let's say I don't want it in my fleet anymore. Well, I can do two things. First of all, I have to unclick this and then I can click this button to dismiss or take. So you have two options here. You can move it to the docks, which is basically to put it back um, here. See, like my victory and my Santisma are at my docks right now. So you can move it to the docks, which basically takes it out of your fleet and puts it into the ships available for you to crew, or you can dismiss it. Dismissing it basically deletes the ship. Like completely like it's just gone so don't like most of the time unless it's just like a you know a ship you don't care about dismissing it is something you're not going to do i mean it makes more sense to move it to the docks yeah and at least then I can sell it, right? And, you know, make the money back that I paid for it. And it's still using 240 crew at this point. Well, that's because it's my main ship right now. Let's go and back, jump back on this. So now it has zero, the Rename has zero crew. So if I want to back, want to add it back into my fleet, I have to go back through the entire process again of send to fleet, waiting for that to reload. Fleet, click, home, manage crew, okay. Excellent, and there I go, I'm ready to go. Oh yeah, look at that beautiful sunrise. All right, so I'm out in the open world and I'm sailing and sailing is boring, right? Well, not now, they've added fishing to the game. Now you don't have to be standing still or stopped to, to do fishing. You can just happily sail along and catch fish while you do it. How do you do that? Well, see this button up here, this new button? And see it's empty here. Just click this and all of a sudden my fishing is activated. That means my crew is now fishing while I'm sailing. I mean, that is so cool. I love, I, I love that. So it just kind of blinks on and off and it doesn't really do much. Like randomly, you'll just catch some fish and they'll show up here. All right, so I caught two needlefish. And if I open my inventory, 
and it has to, you know, refresh. I've got, oh, there we go. There's my needlefish, my tuna, my catfish. I've got a dorado. And uh, you can kind of deal with these things while you're at sea. Uh, if I just right click on them, I can go to convert all. And that will give me more fish meat. So what are fish useful for? Well, they give you fish meat. Fish meat is used to make uh, food products. Uh, food products are used to make health kits. So it's basically a resource for crafting consumables. Okay, so I'm just approaching uh, just a normal fleet order. It's a curse and uh, I've got my fishing on. So you can uh, manage your crew and you can manage your fleet from here. So you can see I just clicked on it and you know I can see my victory has this many crew and I have my Rename, which I can sink out at sea and just to get rid of it if I really wanted to, like say I wanted to cap a, a better ship or something like that. And you can actually play with the, the amount of crew you have at sea. And I can uh, like, yeah, I can actually send them back to to town, which is kind of crazy. Okay, let's come to a stop because I'm beside my mission. So like here, see like I've got 10 free crew sitting, you know, basically back at port. And if I wanted to, I can basically under crew this Rename and yeah, we'll put it at exactly 200. Okay. Sending crew. So Now it got rid of my interface, which I don't like. So my Rename is sitting at only 84%. I have 50 crew sitting back at port, and I can just move the slider back up to 240. I don't know how they're going to get back out here or where they went, but if I click this, then, yeah. Click, I don't, I don't like how it closes every time. But look, it's, it's back up to being fully crewed. <laughs> All right, let's hop into a mission here. Enter. All right, so here I am in my mission, and you can see my Rename is right there with me. So we're going to take on these two, what are they, third rates, all by ourselves. <laughs> so this is kind of cool. I mean, I, I like having fleets, and you can control your little buddy here by uh, op pressing M and opening the map. And you can see here, like, this red line tells you which one he's going to go for. So that's cool. I like that. So he's in free mode right now. So I can actually select a ship like this one here, like that this guy over here. And I can say, yeah, go and uh, destroy him. So he, so you can see the line change, and he's now focused on that other guy. He's going to go up, and he's going to, like, blast the, the living uh, crap out of him. And, um, yeah. Or now I can there's a couple things that I can tell him to do I can tell him to demast in which case he's going to try and uh, Take down his mass. I can tell him to hold his fire Which he's not going to do anything. I can tell him to follow me Or I can just tell him to stop like I can tell him to like, you know, basically just sit there and do nothing uh, You know and you can see he's starting to cut his sails now or I can tell him to retreat which is to get out of the battle but uh, <laughs> let's have him focus on something. So I'm going to put him on destroy. And, s oh, and you also have the option to put him on free mode, which means he'll basically just do whatever he wants. Ooh, I should probably get moving myself. So he's going to go for that other, uh, for this guy here, Mr. Bier Crow. And I'm going to go for the other one as soon as I get up to sail here. And yeah, as soon as I get going, gosh, you know, first rate takes forever. Well, I'm not going to bore you with this battle because you've already seen it. And nothing too much has really changed with the combat itself per se, except for something that I want to show you a little bit later once I get a little bit closer. Oh, hold on, before I skip ahead, let's see what he does. Let's see how he engages this guy. 
So, yeah. Rename versus a third rate. I don't think he's going to last too long. All right, so I got a fire ship fitting out of that. That's cool. I'll put that up here. So, I got 581 officer experience from that battle out of the amount that I got here. So, maybe about 50%. And that goes towards my officer's uh, next rank. So he should have leveled up. You can also manage your crew and your fleet from here. My Rename is, well, it's sunk, but I guess it's still here. Because it, oh yeah, because it has, uh, it has multiple durability. And you can manage your crew from here, so uh, I can. So, yeah, let's try that. I'm not going to do that. Uh, we're going to just click OK. Yeah, see, not enough crew. Because I don't have enough free crew to do that. So I'm just going to have to go to Cancel. Because I used pretty much all my crew. In fact, I should be able, so I'm at uh, 751. I should be able, yep, I'm just going to look at that. I can, no. Come on. Oh, stupid slider. Okay, so I can increase my crew just a little bit more to take advantage of whatever free crew I have left. And that basically, yeah, I can't, I can't use any more. I basically have to go back to port and buy more crew before I can put any more crew on my ships. Ooh. Okay, so I'm just sailing back to town. I just wanted to make a few more comments about um, that double charge uh, uh, perk. Like, I know there's a lot of different ways you could probably use that. It would probably flatten the trajectory of, um, of cannonballs, especially at range, because they're being fired with a higher velocity. And I know it would let you get penetrations at a much farther distance. I know I didn't show that off. This isn't particularly about showing off um, all the, like, everything about double charge and about double and double ball or double shot that's that would be for like a whole nother video this is just you know to let you know about like what they've added and to just give you a brief overview of it Ooh, i caught some more flounder and some catfish fishing love it all right so i'm back in port and yeah let's just repair my ship Alright, so um, my Rename actually ended up getting sunk. You can see like it's only at 34% health. And it's got... Well, it's still got the 5 durability on it. That's cool. Well, it got sunk. So I guess the ships in your fleet don't lose durability. That's cool. Really like that. But I do need to repair it, so I'm going to click Repair. Yes, Confirm. I'm going to keep it in my fleet for now. Actually, no, I'm going to remove it from my fleet. And... I'm going to go back home. So at this point, I have two free crew because I lost all the crew on my uh, Rename. So I need to go back to manage crew and look at this. I need to hire more crew. So I can buy 170? No. I want to replenish everything. Look at that. To replenish all the crew that I lost, all 339 of them, look at that. 170,000 gold. That is not cheap to get, you know, to replenish the my entire stock of crew. And then, of course, you know, to put that crew on there. I mean, that is expensive. So if you lose a lot of your crew, like capping ships, it's going to be expensive to put them back on. Or, you know, for whatever reason, crew is not cheap anymore. Wow. Okay, so there's just a few more things I wanted to say about crew management. First off, if you end up losing your ship, you lose all the crew on your ship. Like, you saw I lost um, my 
fleet, the Rename in my fleet. And then afterwards, he had like no crew on him. And that's true with your main ship as well. If you lose your main ship, you lose all the crew on it. So like my Santa Zima here, you know, if I <laughs> lost my Santa Zima, not only am I going to take the hit of losing my first rate, I'm going to take the hit of losing over a thousand crew as well, which will be very, very expensive to replace. Considering that just buying 339 crew cost me almost 170,000 gold. So multiply that by three. That would be maybe like over 500,000 gold to replace my whole crew. That's kind of expensive considering that this ship is only worth around 2 million. Um, when it comes to surrendering though, you don't lose anything. Just like with the officer, if you surrender, you don't lose any crew at all. You just, you know, you lose durability on your ship and you end up back in the nearest port. So you don't have to worry about losing crew there. You know, if you get stuck someplace or you just don't want to play anymore or whatever, you, know, you need to get out. Like, they're not going to penalize you for surrendering, which, you know, aside from losing a durability on your ship, which I think is kind of reasonable. Um, and you can also use med kits to get back crew after your or after a battle without having to return to port. A med kit just generally um, kind of fills up any crew that you're missing on your ship, and there are several different sizes. I'll show you um, um, I'll show you a large med kit later that I'm going to craft. Another thing that I really like about patch 9.9 .9 is what they've done with the map. So if you're just kind of zoomed out here, then you know it looks very similar to what you used to before the patch, except for this grid. Now this grid doesn't look all that special when you're zoomed out. However, when you zoom in, look at this, you start getting grid coordinates. And look at this right here, right below this uh, nations thing. You are at 86, 06, 30, 04. So, and this updates in real time. So look at this. Okay, so if I find this 80 and 30, yeah, I'm basically right here. And this is cool because that tells me, okay, here's my mission. And I can kind of approximate where it is based on, you know, the numbers here. So it's probably at um, 80, I'm going to guess, wait, that's 85, okay. So it's probably going to be at like 85, 95, and maybe at about... Well, that's 29, maybe at about 29 something or other, maybe like 2980 or 29, yeah, maybe about 2985. So I'm at 2998. So if I exit my map, I should be able to see it right now, but I need to go a little bit more east. All right. And let's see here. My Admiralty Order, yes, exactly, where I thought I was going to be. And I just need to go a little bit more east. And I'm right at my Admiralty Order. So that map grid is very useful. It gives you a place so you don't have to use, or it gives you your place on the map so you don't have to use some like third party website or program to try and find where you are you know it's like if we go back and look at this there we go it's not it's not super obvious it's really small but it's more than enough to approximate where you are it doesn't tell you exactly where you are like with a little dot on the map so it's super easy and like a no-brainer for you to see you still have to do some work you know some cognitive work to try and figure out where you are and where you're going but still, it's a lot better than having no idea where you are at all. So I think that is a fantastic addition. Okay, so I wanted to also kind of uh, bring up boarding because boarding is another thing that they've kind of changed. Um, be like in 
previous patches, they took away the ability to capture combat ships. They have since added that back. And you can now capture combat ships up to fourth rates. Now, I've, uh, I'm here capturing a first rate. And, oh, I'm going a little bit too fast. And uh, that's, or this means that basically I'm not going to be able to capture this ship and take it with me. Although I will be able to send it to the Admiralty. So I, you still make money off of it. And they have adjusted the amount or the prices for this. There we go. They have adjusted the amounts that you get for first rates and other ships. Now, one of the first things you might notice is, look at this, he has a crew of 850. For those of you who do a lot of boarding, you might kind of think of that as a little bit weird because usually they have a bit more crew. Well, they've taken off extra hammocks from basically every ship in the game. And so now they're all going to just have their default um, amount of crew. Okay, let's attack. Wow, the battle is over in a single attack. That was not expected. <laughs> wow. So I killed 278 crew of his 572. Wow, that was incredibly short. So, I mean, like, what the heck happens? And I only lost 30, 34 crew doing this. I mean, that was fantastic. All right, so... Boarding one, escape. So I'm not going to say that boarding is a lot easier now because uh, it's not actually the the attack does less damage than before. But uh, I don't know how this all worked out. All right. So off of that ship, I got 343,000 gold. That is a big change uh, before, you know, that's how much a Santisma was worth. Now a Santisma is worth like 420,000. So that's a, that's a nice change. I like that. Um, however, you know, defeating a victory in one round was surprising. I did not expect that. So I don't know what's going on. They're pr probably going to change and balance this. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of here. So I've got 50 free crew still left back in my home port. So I'm going to use that to replenish the crew that I lost. And I'm going to, I have another mission right beside this one. So I'm going to go to that mission and I'm going to see if I can get another Santisma or something like that so that I can test out this boarding thing a little bit more thoroughly. I have, I had already tested it out. So let's use my handy dandy map. <laughs> I'm at 85. Yeah, so I was about here. So I've just got to go. Yeah. Wow, okay, so it's right there. Didn't even need to use the map. So, yeah. So that was kind of shocking. I took my Santisma out just before, uh, or sorry, not just before, but just after the, I released the patch to try and do some uh, capturing. And I got another Santisma, and it took, like four or five attacks to to take to, to take down that Santisma and I think I lost something like 200 crew so I mean you know like before I could I could have done that in like two or three attacks you know so it's definitely changed I was really surprised to be able to take out a victory in just one attack now one of the differences in like they've released hot patches since uh, the release of patch 9.9 .9, so that might be affecting it I'm not sure so let's see what we get in this one hopefully we'll get something that is capturable if not then um, well really 
Oh, annoying. Oh, the sun is rising. Pretty. All right. Oh yeah, I got a Santisma. Fantastic. That's exactly what I wanted to get. So I'm just gonna skip ahead because uh, you don't need to watch me sailing up to her. And I shall show you what happens when you try to board a Santisma, how the boarding's changed. Okay, about ready to go into boarding. The Santisma. Ooh, he's being a tricky bugger. And he is turning in to the wind. You know, they've changed the AI. The AI is far less predictable now. Alright, here we go. I should be able to capture the ship now. I should be close enough. It's not like he's moving very fast. There we go. Excellent. Same thing. He has no extra hammocks. He had pretty low preparation. I've got a lot of marines. He doesn't have very much. So this is quite a big difference. Let's see what he does. Of course, I'm not going to give him the chance to defend. That would just be silly. And a first attack. 280 of his crew, so, you know, it really took down his morale. That's good. That's very good. It took a lot of my preparation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's firing grenades. Very typical AI kind of pattern. Wow, okay, so I won the boarding in two rounds. <laughs> Not what I expected. But um, I guess boarding is easier now than it was when I first came out. So I guess they've patched it since. Which I guess makes the attack even more powerful than it was before? I don't remember being able to take a Santi in two rounds. Okay, well let's see what I got for that. Look at that. Uh, 428,000 gold from capturing that one Santisma. I mean, that is crazy. And basically, I earned back, in just those two missions, I earned back all the money I spent upgrading my warehouse, which is nice. <laughs> Definitely like that. Okay, so there's just a few more things I wanted to say about uh, boarding, uh, the changes they've made to it. Before you were able to capture ships that you had successfully boarded, it, when you captured a ship, like, I mean, like, actually pressed X to capture the ship, you got transferred over to that ship. One of the changes they've made in patch 9.9 .9 is you can you now have the option to transfer crew over to that ship without actually assuming command of it. And it then becomes, well, assuming you haven't filled up, you know, the, the two s slots you have in your current, like, open world fleet, then that ship can join your fleet. And you can thus command it as one of your, like, you know, kind of one of your fleet ships. So you could theoretically, you know, board a ship, capture it, add it to your fleet, you know, assign some crew to it, and then tell it to retreat and get out of the battle. Which means that you don't have to stay in the battle until the battle's conclusion um, to get your ship. You can, you know you can get that capture ship out of the battle long before the battle's concluded and you yourself can then exit without losing your captured ship. Before, you know, you had to wait until either everything in the battle was dead or the battle timer expired, which, you know, the battle timer is an hour and a half. I mean, so, I mean, that happened to me like a couple days ago with one of my buddies. We captured an enemy constitution and, um, 
our enemy just decided to sail off into the distance, you know, so that we could never catch up. Um, and we had basically had no choice but to stay in that battle until the hour and a half battle timer expired in order to keep that constitution that we captured. Now you can just assign some crew to it and tell it to get out and you can keep your captured ship and you would just be able to leave and you know regardless of what the enemy is doing. So I, I really like that. That's another really positive change that's really good about boarding. Oh yeah, look at that beautiful sunset. Oh, this game is very gorgeous. So I would show that whole capturing process, but I'm a little bit short on time. And to be honest, it's not really too different from what you um, experienced before. And, you know, the crew, as you've seen, like the crew management with the sliders and stuff, it's pretty much the same idea. So it's not really that different. So I'm not going to show it in this video. I might show it in a future video. But honestly, it's uh, it's not really that complicated. So, all right, let's talk about the changes they've made to crafting. So they've made quite a few additions. Uh, one of the things you'll probably notice when you take a look at your crafting tab is there's a new consumables option, and that covers the med kit, food supplies, rum, and repair kits, which. Uh, so you can now craft consumables and the med kits are to replenish your crew repair kits are to heat are to you know fix your ship and rum and food supplies are two essential ingredients of the large med kit uh, so you need so I've already gone ahead and I've already gotten um, all, the, all the materials uh, the tobacco, the rum, and the food supplies required to craft some large med kits, which are used for healing your crew. So why don't I... Okay, so I can only produce two of these. Let's go and let's click craft and let's see what we get. So it's quite an investment. I mean, you know, 240 food supplies. I successfully... What? I thought I was supposed to do two of these. R oh, I see. I don't have enough room in my warehouse. Okay, let's see here. Wow, my warehouse is super full. This is... Uh, I'm going to have to use my the gross venture. All right, um... Actually, you know what? Screw that. Let's just... Yeah, sure, why not? Let's just expand the warehouse. All right, there we go. Let's go back to crafting. And yeah, I want my other large med kit. Craft. It still takes a long time for this stuff to register. I don't know what's going on. Anyways, okay, so I've crafted my large med kits. So my large med kit recruits up to or restores up to 150 crew. So that is very, very useful, especially for a ship of the line like a, uh, a Santa Zima who's going out or a Pavel who's going out and doing a lot of capping. With two of these, you could restore up to 300 crew without having to go back to port to buy more. So basically what this does is it'll add 150 crew to your ship, or I'm assuming, yeah, never mind, it, just to your ship. So, you know, these things are going to be extremely useful to have on you uh, for basically any and every situation where you don't want to have to sail all the way back to port to, you know, to replenish your crew. So those are very, very, very useful. I'm very happy that we can uh, craft uh, the uh, repair kits. So I can uh, craft one of these as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and do so. It's only 40 labor hours. They're cheap. Come on. All right, so I have a large repair kit. 
and it fixes 2,000 armor and 2,000 of sails. So that is, uh, and it can be used to repair both your main ship and your fleet ship. So that's really cool. So it's really cool that you can craft those now. You can buy them in the shop. They're in the consumables, but you can only grab basically, where is it, the small versions. Like, and the small versions, 10 crew, 500 armor, 500 sails. I mean, it's basically, it's basically nothing. You know, it's for like really small ships. Let's go back to crafting. So they've made some other changes besides adding these consumables. Obviously, um, you know, there's, well, there's not really more stuff here. Let's move on. What am I talking about? Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, what one of the things? One of the nice changes that I really, really, really um, like about uh, crafting now is that if I need to craft iron ingots, before I could only craft like I think a maximum of 32, and I could only use 16 labor hours. Now labor hours go in increments of 10. And I can craft up to, look at this, 320 iron ingots. These numbers are so much bigger. Like for any of you who do, who have done crafting and, who, and had to craft planks, because you know, planks are one of those things you need a, a lot of. Now you can craft just straight up 800 planks. I mean, that is so amazing. And I can just, you know, go to 400 instead. I mean, look at that. That is beautiful. I love not having to continuously go through this super long process of having to wait for, like, every batch to finish. Now, look at that. One batch. 400 planks. Freaking amazing. I love it. So that's one of the really great positive changes that I'm really happy about that they did with crafting. Another uh, issue that you should probably, or another thing you should probably know, rum. Rum was never craftable before. You had to go buy it at Outpost, but it was, or at ports, but it was super cheap, and it was like everywhere. Now, it's not everywhere, and it's way more expensive. It's five times more expensive, but it's craftable now, at least, um, with barrels and sugar. Um, so you can get barrels through woodworking. Sugar is something that you're going to have to either make a building for or you're going to have to go and buy at uh, the different ports that actually produce it. And I don't know which ones do. Buildings are another one of the things they've changed. Uh, buildings now produce more and they have a larger storage and they're cheaper to get stuff out of. So basically, um, like before... It was far more advantageous to go sailing around and doing trading and buying um, the resources produced by ports. And because you needed labor hours to get uh, stuff out of your buildings, it really wasn't that competitive. And now, like here, you can see I no long, well, I'm using 240 labor hours and I'm going to have to pay 11,000 gold, but, you know, I'm getting 600 silver, and that is, like, a huge amount of silver. So, compared to what you used to be able to get. So, that's really nice. I like that they've, you know, if I just grab one. No, I can't. Well, anyways, to get, uh, to get resources is now cheaper, and, you know, it's more viable than it was before patch 9.9 .9. so that's cool I really like that and no I'm not going to collect these right now or oh, maybe I will yeah sure why not it's expensive 240 labor hours each all right so anyways, so that's another thing that they've changed. The buildings themselves are still just as expensive as they were before. So it's 10,000 to build a, a mine. It's 70 or 50,000 
to upgrade it to level 2, and it's 150,000 to upgrade it to level 3. So um, before the patch and after the patch, the prices to actually build buildings are still the same. They just, um, but now your buildings are just, you know, give you more stuff per day at the expense of, I guess, more labor, more labor hours, but at a reduced cost of gold and they have more storage. So you can definitely get a lot more from buildings. And I guess that's going to help because it's going to give you like a more kind of competitive advantage before people had a, a really hard time getting like a particular resource. If they couldn't get that through trading or through buying it through uh, por uh, ports because other people had already gone and bought everything. So now like if you really need something, you can produce quite a bit of it on your own, which I think is better. Okay, so there's one more really exciting addition in patch 9.9, .9, and that is the sealed bottle. So a sealed bottle is uh, a rare item that you have a chance to get through fishing. It's completely random. You're just out there fishing, and you have this small chance to get a sealed bottle. And I happen to have gotten one here. And my sealed bottle... my the bottle is sealed with wax. You wonder, how did it end up here? Well, this is kind of like a, a treasure item. So if I click on it and I go use. If you open this bottle, you will lose all previously discovered shipwreck locations. Oh, open it anyways. Yeah, let's confirm. Okay, so I've opened my, uh, my bottle and it's disappeared. Now I need to go up and check my map. Okay, so the question is, where is my shipwreck? Okay, wow, so it's all the way down here. So the uh, Santa Cecilia shipwreck found belongs to Ben de Leon. And that's all the way down here. That's really far. All right, but you know what? I'm still, we're going to do it anyways, because this is really exciting. These shipwrecks, apparently, they have, like, very, very exciting things. And I'm not going to spoil it until we actually get there. So... It's time to skip ahead, and I will see you at the shipwreck. Okay, it's the dawn of a new day, and I am heading towards my wreck, which I can see off in the distance there. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is so cool. So I just grabbed a, uh, a Trader's Links from my closest outpost because uh, that was, I think, like the best option. And yeah, I'm super <laughs> excited. I mean, this is basically a treasure ship and that is just so cool. I mean, like, yeah, I don't even know what to say. That, yeah, we're getting closer. That is so cool. Okay, so I am... I skipped ahead a little bit just so you didn't have to wait for me sailing all the way here. And look at that. That is my treasure ship. That is so cool. I mean, like, holy crow. Like, wow. I have never seen a I have never seen a treasure ship before, but this is cool. All right, so we're gonna try and get close enough, and I'm gonna have to cut my sails. Ooh, maybe I cut my sails just a little too soon. It's like Pirates of the Caribbean or something. That is cool. I wonder. What? Oh, yeah. Looks like a. What is. 
an India man? Yeah, it looks like an India man. That's exactly what it looks like to me. All right, let's, uh, let's cut my cut my sails. Yeah, it's an India man. <laughs> it's a brown India man with worn and torn sails. Okay, let's click on this. The Cecilia, the Santa Cecilia shipwreck found belongs to Ben de Leon. Explore. Contains, look at this, 116 gold coins, one boarding parties, 125 silver coins. So now this is cool because look, it's telling me basically everything I need. My total weight will be 161, which is fine. I, in this thing, I've got 800 upgrade slots needed one and hold slots needed okay two so that is really cool so we are going to take this from the shipwreck oh my gosh so cool okay and picking up goods the shipwreck disappeared and now that that's done let's see what we got all right, so board. Wow, look at that exceptional boarding parties. Holy crap. I mean, like boarding parties are drop only. Like these are things that you cannot get by crafting. And that is freaking amazing. Wow. Not only that, but like the gold coins and the silver coins. That is really cool. Like wow oh my gosh i'm freaking out that is so darn cool i mean these gold coins i mean it takes a huge amount of labor hours to produce them like that many and also the silver coins as well because you need coal you need silver getting the silver getting silver is not particularly easy that is uh fairly difficult because silver is in such high demand it's usually out of stock basically everywhere you go uh, so that is really cool i mean really cool and um you know the labor hours and the coal you need to fashion both the iron the silver ingots and the then the silver coins and the same with the gold you know and to fashion that into gold ingots and then gold coins, I mean, that just saves you a good amount of labor hours and a lot of work, really. And it's not just, it's also the labor hours you would be using to get the silver out of whatever uh, silver mines you have if you're not able to buy it from a port directly. So that is really cool. I mean, I could probably sell these straight up and for quite a bit and probably make maybe several hundred thousand off of them that is really cool i mean wow treasure ships in the game so freaking cool i mean this has just added something that i'm really excited for and it, this makes me want to fish like who cares about the fish i want a freaking you know sealed bottle to take me to another shipwreck so I can get like these amazing things. Oh my gosh, just so cool. Wow, I'm 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 totally geeking out. <laughs> Anyways, okay, I will see you guys back at port and there's just a uh, a few more things that I want to cover about patch 9.9 .9, um before we finish up. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to cover Conquest. They've made some changes, some very significant changes to the way port battles work. Uh, the first one is here, see, I've already selected Port Morant. If I get information, see, uh, so I'm in the capture window. I could technically buy this flag, although it's kind of expensive. After I buy this flag, um, there is a two day cooldown now on being able to buy the flag again. So, um, for not only me, but for all pirates, once I buy this flag, no one else can buy this flag for Port Morant for two days afterwards. So if we fail to cap, so if I bought it and we failed to capture it, we have to wait two days before we can try again. So that's one of the things they've kind of added um, to kind of make 
you know, defending a little bit easier. They've also changed the conditions under which you can win a port battle. Now, I'm not sure exactly on the specifics and the Ring of Death and everything else, but I know they've changed the conditions so that for small port battles, uh, I think you only need to have at least like one tower. And I'm not sure how the BR is affected. Um, and for large port battles, you need to have at least three towers. Again, I'm not super specific, but I do know that things have changed. And I think what they're doing is they've they've done the, they've lowered the tower requirement to make it easier uh, for people to capture a port. But again, I haven't had time to test that out, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. Another big change that they've made is here. If I go to the map um, before, like here, see, like Salam is a regional capital. Um, with the way port battles work now is uh, shallow water ports can only accept shallow water ships like uh, Tantan Kuzamil here. Um, Kuyo, which is just a deep water port, uh, you can take up to fourth rates into. So basically I think anything from a mortar brig plus a Cerberus up to a fourth rate you can take into a deep water battle. And then Salam is a regional capital, and you can take anything from a Cerberus up to a first rate. Now, before there wasn't really that many regional capitals, like there's a regional capital here, and there was a regional capital here at Tullum, but um, like it's very limited the ports or the port battles that you can take first rates into. So what they've done is they've added more regional capitals, and you can go to um, like I've put the link in the description. Um, the link to the forum post and you can go there and it has another link to give you like the full list of you know uh, Ports they've changed to regional capitals if you want to go and uh, and check that out and also if you want to go and read like the patch notes specifically Okay, so aside from all of that there they've made a few more changes to ships and to combat uh, the the relog timer if you get like disconnected during a battle is now 40 minutes i don't know if that's really a big deal though they have definitely they have decreased the speed slightly on the trink and or the tricomely and the rattlesnake i guess they figured those two ships were too fast so the rename has been left untouched as far as i know the rattlesnake is now a little bit slower and so is the tricomely uh the Bell Pool, on the other hand, has gotten a slight increase to its speed, and mass thickness has been increased on all ships. There have also been um, a number of other small changes. I'm not going to cover all of them. If you want to you know, see them all, you can uh, click the link in the description and you can read the patch notes. I've covered everything that I think is uh, that were the important major changes and the relevant changes in patch 9.9 uh, .9. the other stuff is just kind of like small little stuff that i don't really think is going to affect a whole lot of people anyways so um that is everything they've done in patch 9.9 .9. wow it's a lot and um thank you for your patience and thank you for sticking it through this very long video uh this has been sorvistion in naval action uh Please like the video and subscribe to my channel for more videos about naval action. Until next time, captains, take care and happy sailing.